Hello everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger and today we're going to be talking about this storm right over here off of the coast of Florida. As you can see, it is starting to really get some tropical activity going here. We have a couple of pretty cold cloud tops here on the eastern side of Florida. Also, our chances for development have gone up as well. We have a 20% chance over the next two days of this forming and a 30% over the next seven days. So the chances are increasing with this tropical system. And if we come over here to our visible satellite view, you can see that we are actually starting to see some spin actually already to develop. And a lot of people are thinking that if this convection keeps as it's going right now and doesn't get stifled by inland convection might push the circulation a little bit farther south giving it a little bit more time over the Atlantic and that could contribute to a stronger storm but that's not a guaranteed conclusion if we come over to our radar you can also see that a spin is pretty apparent here on our radar you can see it spinning around in this area right there and it's still quite a couple of few hundred miles off of the coast here uh, of Florida so it does have a little bit more time over the Atlantic now if this storm does form it is going to become Dexter and we are thinking the highest probabilities of where this forms right now is going to be over the Gulf of Mexico but there is still a small chance that this forms over the Atlantic and goes into Florida and then potentially hops out of Florida comes into the Gulf of Mexico potentially is a stronger system if it can form in the Atlantic so we'll be talking about those scenarios but another thing that I want to note that even the National Hurricane Center is also catching on to this Earlier this morning, this 10% region to 30% region was really just over Florida going into the Gulf of Mexico. But as you can see, because of that increased convection that is still hanging out with this storm and the probabilities that this center of spin or low pressure could form a little bit further down to the south, they've actually extended it off to the east a little bit. And that's mainly to cover some of the probabilities that this could form before it goes into Florida. Now, if we look at our sea surface temperatures just off of the east of Florida, you can see that we this thing is currently sitting over a decent pocket here of around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius. Again, you want over 26 degrees Celsius to sustain activity, like tropical activity, and we do have that still on the eastern side of Florida. The closer this thing gets to Florida, though, the lower those temperatures get, but that could still potentially, sorry, sustain a tropical storm or a tropical depression if one were to form. And then as it comes back out over here, we are still continuing to see our temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico rise. I mean, we're talking about 30 degrees Celsius to 31 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Celsius still building out over here in the northern Gulf of Mexico, which is actually where the storm is going to be going after it goes through Florida, potentially causing some flooding and then heading into the Gulf of Mexico. Now we're going to look at our models, which is kind of our crystal ball when it comes to trying to figure out what these storms can do. Basically like throwing a bunch of darts on the board and seeing where they land. It kind of changes some of the parameters and allows us to see what is possible with this system. And as you can see, this is the EPS, the Euro Ensemble model. As I push this forward, uh, it actually tries to develop it just to the east of Florida, maybe as a weak tropical depression before it goes into Florida. Then it kind of fizzles, as you can see there. And then we get some new signals pop up as the system moves close to Louisiana. And in fact, a lot of our models are bringing this either into the Mississippi coast or into the Louisiana coast as well. But as you can see with a lot of these different members, it's not very strong. You know, we have maybe a tropical depression or a tropical storm there. So as of right now, it does seem like our biggest threat with this storm is going to be flooding. But again, there are some little things that maybe these models aren't capturing. And one of those things that the models have been really bad at capturing is just how much convection is going on at the current moment near this storm, which again, can tug that circulation further to the south, allowing it over the Atlantic longer and potentially entering out of Florida as a stronger storm, which would give it a lot more time as a little bit more of an organized system into the Gulf of Mexico. So we do have to continue to watch out for that probability. If this thing doesn't form before it goes into Florida, struggles over Florida, falls apart, kind of stays a little bit further to the north and then gets tugged almost immediately into like Mississippi or Louisiana. That's just not going to be a whole lot of time over that warm water. We could still easily get a tropical storm, but in terms of like a hurricane, that's pretty much going to be off the table. So I do want to prefresh all that and just kind of summarize, like I am a little bit concerned that our models aren't completely capturing what this storm could do. But regardless, we'll look at our different ensembles and see in our deterministic models and see what is possible out here. Coming over to the GEFS, you can also see it tries to develop something weak over there east of Florida, goes over Florida, and then kind of tracks more into like the Florida panhandle in Alabama there. So it seems like we're starting to narrow down a corridor here of potential impact, at least for now. Again, we haven't had any planes go out there. As you can see, there have been no aircraft reconnaissance missions in the past six hours. 
And when our models look at this storm, they're getting data from like maybe satellites, which are looking at the tops of the storm, maybe some ships that are out over here, maybe some METAR data, some data collection devices, atmospheric data collection virus, uh, not viruses, devices uh, on the coast of Florida. And maybe a little bit of data from an airplane that like flies near the storm that is carrying like passengers. If it's like going over to Europe or something, it might pass near the storm and there are some data collection devices on those as well. But again, all those are just measuring small portions of the storm. If we think of this storm as kind of like a 3D box, which is what it is. I mean, the atmosphere is 3D. And then we kind of just draw it out like so. You know, we get one plane pass into this box here at one elevation. That's only measuring a small bit of data in that zone. You get satellite looking from the top. You're only measuring a small little area of the top of the square or the cube. You get a ship pass through this area. Again, you're just getting a small portion of that surface data. But this is a large area. You know, thankfully, we're not thinking this thing's going to become a hurricane before it hits Florida. So there's not a whole lot of urgency to get our Hurricane Hunter plane, which will fly in all different levels of the atmosphere and give us a lot better picture of what this storm is doing. So I do think our models are going to be a little bit unreliable, which means surprises are going to be a little bit higher of a chance of happening uh, with this storm. So we do need to keep all scenarios in mind. So this is the GFS model. This is the deterministic model. It's the only one model run. It's not an average or anything. So we're only seeing, you know, a model pick certain parameters and then just doing one run. And all these different models are going to be picking different parameters. So it's going to give us different scenarios. Here's the GEFS. It has a storm try to form off of eastern Florida, dies as it goes over land, doesn't really reform anything back, anything back over here into Louisiana, Mississippi, makes landfall around Wednesday night into Thursday, mainly bringing a flash flood threat. Now coming over to the Giro model, it also tries to develop to the east of Florida, a little bit further north there, and then it just kind of skims land, brings a lot of rain and a flood threat, but that's about it. Makes landfall somewhere Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Now this is an AI model over here. This is the Euro AI model. It tries to form a tropical storm or tropical depression or tropical system trying to organize right before Florida, a little bit further north, skims the panhandle of Florida, never really re-enters back out into the ocean until about Louisiana. Kind of keeps it a little bit further south, maybe just a tiny bit longer time for it to reorganize, and then we might get a tropical storm out of that before it runs into Louisiana in the southern portion of Louisiana. Our Canadian models are also indicating a pretty similar solution, a little bit farther north with that low pressure. Then it goes into Florida Panhandle and then goes into Louisiana as a little bit of a stronger system, potentially as a tropical storm. And then our icon model is continuing to be our worst case scenario. Now, this is the scenario. You can see our low pressure system is a little bit further south, has a little bit more time, potentially even forms into a tropical depression before hitting Florida, goes over Florida, kind of keeps its strength, but believe it or not, re-enters and then quickly strengthens as it leaves Florida and then goes into Louisiana. And again, this is a further south track. So leaving it a little bit more time to organize before moving into the Gulf of Mexico. And that brings us a stronger system that would be close to a very strong tropical storm or a low end hurricane making landfall uh, in Louisiana. So if we combined all of that together and make a graphic here, I do think landfall is going to be possible really anywhere from like this area right in here. I think our weaker scenarios are further north, track closer to land and never can really get organized, either making landfall somewhere in the panhandle of Florida or into Mississippi and Louisiana. And I think our highest end scenario, we get a little bit of a track to the south. It forms into a tropical depression or tropical storm before going into Florida, coming close to like Palm Bay or Port St. Lucie, tracking, bring, bringing a lot of rain and flooding into Florida as well. And then kind of being way out here, not really interacting with much land, tapping into the low shear environment, strengthening, becoming a tr stronger tropical storm or hurricane before making landfall into southern Louisiana. I think that's pretty much how this forecast is going to play out for the remainder of this storm. So here's what I have to say. Right now, we have a lot of uncertainties. Anybody going out there saying they know for 100% fact this is going to be a hurricane, they don't know. Nobody knows right now because we haven't had a plane go through there. We haven't had much accurate data about what this storm is doing right now in order to determine what it's going to do in the future. So no one quite knows just yet. There are some rumbles and rumors out there that the hurricane 
reconnaissance plane or the hurricane hunters are going to be out there tomorrow investigating the storm. So we should have more data. Our models will probably change quite a bit tomorrow and they'll probably start to consolidate tomorrow after that plane goes through as they're all going to get that same data. And the people that run those models are going to feed that data into the models and we'll get a more accurate picture. But for right now, we don't really have a good depiction of what the storm is doing right now. So I would definitely put a pause before freaking out about the storm, because again, we have very weak scenarios with most of our models. And there's only one model that brings this strong. But again, if the data is wrong, all of our models are wrong right now. So I would urge caution to wait until tomorrow to see what's going to happen with this thing. But those are my current thoughts right now. Now going over our severe weather threats over the next couple of days, starting off with today and going into the flooding threats, temperatures for both days. As you can see out over here in the northern plains, we are going to be expecting some storms to fire. We have a slight risk over here near Rapid City and Pierre, where we are expecting some storms to get started at around 4 to 5 p.m. and then eventually move off to the east, not really expecting much of a tornado threat, but could get some damaging winds and some hail out of that. And then eventually we could see some more convection start to happen over here in Montana, North Dakota, and northern Minnesota here with a lot of rain, thunder, lightning, maybe a couple of instances of severe weather. Also back over here near Jonesboro, Arkansas, starting at around 4 to 5 a.m., uh, could see some storms come up there. Small chance for severe weather as we go into the next day as well, all the way up into Bowling Green, probably by around 3 p.m. there. Further back to the east, could have a couple of rain and showers, some thunderstorms, and some severe weather, especially back over here near Washington, Baltimore, and Philadelphia. Starting at around 3 p.m. today, moving through Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington by around 8 p.m., north of Richmond by 10 p.m., then eventually this line exits off of the coast by 1 a.m. with still some lingering showers and potential severe weather over there near Salisbury, but that should mainly be just some thunderstorms. And then further down to the south, we are definitely watching out for a couple of instances of severe weather today, especially around 4 p.m. Really anywhere from Jacksonville down to Miami could see some thunderstorms and some of those could be severe. Also, some flooding rain is going to be possible as this storm approaches. A little interesting thing to note is that the HRRR is a little bit further south with their circulation as well. So that's something else to keep an eye out for. But again, the HRRR isn't really that great of a tropical model. On top of our severe weather, we also have have some more flooding possible down over here in Texas with a moderate risk for flooding back over here near Ciudad, Acuna, Uvalid, Rock Springs, and Kerrville, where we could get anywhere from six to maybe even close to 10 inches of rain down here. Definitely be weather aware, flood aware, and seek higher ground if flooding does occur near you and also potentially over here near New Braunfels and San Marcos. So please keep an eye on that. Also, believe it or not, we have a three out of four, four flooding, a little red moderate risk out here in the Baltimore, Washington, Philadelphia, New Brunswick area. You can see it's going to be a little bit more isolated, but a couple of spots could pick up anywhere from three to four inches of rain, maybe some isolated spots of five to six inches, and it's going to fall pretty fast. So that's why we have a moderate risk for flooding out here, because it's really the rainfall rate that we care about the most when it comes to flooding, because you get a lot of rain at once piles up pretty quickly and you get those rivers moving a little bit faster and a little bit more dangerously. So please out here, you get in a flash flood warning, make sure you're seeking higher ground. And we're also expecting a decent amount of flooding today, a little slight risk down over here near Orlando, all the way down into Miami, where we could have some isolated spots of four to five inches, especially over here, just to the west of Port St. Lucie into the west of Miami, as we get a couple of storms fire off of that tropical system trying to develop. Now, in terms of our high temperatures for today, it will get pretty toasty out there before our typical showers start to get started. You see it's going to be cooler down there in parts of Texas due to that rain and flooding chances down there. Further up to the north, still talking about 90 to almost 100 degree temperatures over here in South Dakota. Still really hot over here in the Pacific Southwest near Las Vegas. Could get up to 110 over here near Phoenix, 100 to 105 in the southeast, 80 to 90s. And pretty cool, actually, 70s to 80s. Maybe some isolated pockets of 90 up there in the northeastern United States. Ohio Valley, 80 to 90s and up into the Great Lakes around 80 to 90 uh, as well. As we go into the overnight hours, it is going to cool down quite a bit, but anywhere near the coast is still going to be particularly warm at around 80 degrees. And back over here, 4 a.m., it's still going to be like 90 degrees to 80 degrees near Las Vegas, all the way down into Phoenix, which is pretty hot at night. A lot of us over in the eastern United States is pretty used to those temperatures cooling down to a nice range. But imagine going outside and it's still 80 to 90 degrees outside in the middle of the night. That would be quite the experience. But be careful out there. That heat is going to be a 
little bit oppressive down there in the Pacific Southwest. Now, in terms of tomorrow's severe weather, we don't really have many areas out there with much potential. We do have a slight risk for severe weather over here near Sioux Falls and North Platte, and that's mainly going to be for damaging winds and hail and a marginal risk that extends from Wyoming, Colorado, all the way up into the UP of Michigan and northern Minnesota. We have a little 2% tornado risk as well over here in parts of Nebraska going into South Dakota, also Duluth over there near Houghton in northern Wisconsin, Minnesota going into the UP of Michigan. As storms get started, we are expecting to see some isolated supercells, maybe a little bit more of a clustering over here south of Pierre with some damaging winds possible. Then a little bit of an MCS develops back over here as that moves up to the north and east could bring a small chance for tornadoes. But the main thing that I'm keeping an eye out here for is going to be those damaging winds. If we get a storm like this right a boundary, that would probably be our biggest tornado chance over there south of winter near Valentine on the border of South Dakota and Nebraska. Something to key and keep an eye out for, but storms should form by around 3 p.m. PM, turn more into an MCS by 7 p.m. and then kind of move off to the east towards like O'Neill by 10 p.m. near Vermilion by 12 a.m. before starting to kind of die off there. Further off to the north for tomorrow, you can see that, you know, some storms will be existing maybe pretty close to the UP of Michigan early in the morning by around 10 a.m. And then we are going to get another little short wave come in here near Duluth and Houghton, getting particularly active as we move into around 7 p.m. near the Houghton area. I would keep an eye on that. That's probably going to be our highest chance for tornadoes with maybe some mini supercells out there with some small brief tornado chances, but damaging winds is certainly going to be possible up there near Houghton as well. And then maybe some more convection back over here south of Duluth late night, kind of about like 8 p.m. south of Duluth, moving off to the east by around 11 p.m. And then by 2 a.m., that shifts more to the east and more into a damaging wind event by 2 a.m. and before dying off completely by 3 a.m. Now, in terms of our flooding chances, I do think that there might be a small chance for some flooding, especially south of Duluth, around like three to four inches. Some isolated flooding will be possible. Well, we're not really thinking anything too dangerous just yet. Also back over here near like Roanoke Harrisonburg, we have a two out of four for some flooding, a couple of isolated pockets there of two to four inches of rain near Harrisonburg, south of Washington, near Richmond, maybe even in between Richmond and Raleigh, North Carolina. Also, maybe some isolated flooding possible over here near Asheville, but that should fall over a longer period of time. I would say like the biggest area where I'm concerned about flooding tomorrow is still going to be back down over here into parts of Florida. When that tropical system makes its way through, whether it's a tropical depression or a tropical storm or really just not anything at all, it's still going to be bringing a decent amount of rain as it comes into Florida. We do have a little bit of a slight risk there. I would stay flood aware out over here, anywhere from pretty much Deltona, Spring Hill down to Miami and potentially even Key West. Now, looking at our temperatures across the United States going into tomorrow, you can see that it's going to be hot again, but it's going to start to cool down a little bit up here into the northern plains. We're going to have a couple of instances of some hotter temperatures, 80s to 90s, all the way up into like the central plains, going up even into the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley area, and even down here in the southeast. While it gets a little bit hotter up here into the northeast with some 70s and 80s returning with some isolated pockets of getting pretty close to those 90 degree temperatures. In the Pacific Southwest, it looks like it's going to get a little bit cooler over there, but still pretty hot as we move into tomorrow. So I would still be ready to be hydrated and not spend too much time outdoors. And really anywhere down into the southeast that does receive those summer like thunderstorms is going to get a little bit of a cool down. So there is some potential of some cooler temperatures if you do get some rain form in an outflow boundary near you. That's going to be it for me. Again, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It does help us grow a lot, and I will see you guys tomorrow for yet another update on our tropical system. We're going to be doing updates every single day, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.